Hey, what is going on everyone? I'm Wicked, welcome back to my Dart from Novice to Expert complete course. In the previous video, we successfully managed to install the Dart SDK on our personal computer. Today, the time has come to put the SDK to practice by creating, running and debugging our first Dart project. I also made sure to include a flowchart containing the topics we'll cover up in this video, as well as how nicely they will integrate with the ones I'll cover up in the next tutorial. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Beforehand though, I want to send a token of appreciation to everyone supporting me as official YouTube members, especially to Diana and Michael aka Aza on Discord. If you want to become a member, all you have to do is to click the join button next to my channel and pick your desired membership. Having that said, let's continue with our tutorial. As an introduction, I would like to tell you that my favorite editor for developing Dart programs is Visual Studio Code. During this entire course, personally I'll be using VS Code mostly because it's really popular, lightweight and because it comes packed with a list of really useful plugins and extensions for developing Dart programs. Here's a list I would like you to definitely take a look at before we dive straight into creating our first Dart project. One of the most important extensions you'll have to install is the Dart code extension, because it will integrate the entire Dart SDK into VS Code. The rest of them will mostly help you code faster and also bring more functionality to Dart and why not, to the VS Code editor itself. I have summarized them bit by bit, but nevertheless, I invite you to take a glance over them and obviously, if you have other extensions that you find really useful in this context, I suggest you write them down in the comment section. Now, let's fire up a Windows terminal in which we'll access the Dart CLI by typing Dart. If you remember, this is where we left in the previous tutorial, inside of which we learned that the tools of Dart SDK are listed as commands inside the Dart command line interface. Since we're interested in creating a new Dart project, the command we should look into is the create command. If we type in Dart create dash H, the Dart CLI will display us further information related to the create command. We can observe that the only way to create a new Dart project is by picking one of these templates. The template from which we can learn the most and that we can also use as a follow-up in the next tutorial is the console full template. Therefore, we'll type Dart create dash T console full plus the name of the project. After the project was successfully created, we can change our path to the project folder and open it up inside VS Code. Now, what you need to know is that if you don't like working with the CLI, you have an alternative. By installing the Dart code extension, you can create a new Dart project directly from inside VS Code. If you hold Ctrl Shift P and type in Dart, you can see that there is a new project option available right there. Picking it up will make VS Code ask us to choose one of the four templates we previously saw inside the Dart CLI. What we can deduce from this is that some of the commands from the Dart CLI have been translated into VS Code as an user-friendly alternative. In reality, what happens with this approach is that VS Code runs the same Dart create command we previously ran this time inside its own hidden terminal. So, as I said, some of these commands are mainly a wrapper over the original commands found inside the CLI. Some developers might argue that the terminal is the holy bible of programming and that all commands should be executed inside of it. My personal opinion on this subject is that you should get to know all available options. Knowing only one side of the story won't make you an expert in Dart, and since this course is named on purpose Dart, from novice to expert, it is mandatory to understand, practice and use the most appropriate tool for your specific scenario. Now that we sorted this out, I'd like to welcome you to the most common structure of a Dart project. Don't worry, we'll cover up each and every component, folder and file of this structure in the next tutorial. Currently, we're only interested in how to create, run and debug our first Dart project. We tackled up how to create it, now it's time to focus on how to run it. As with many other programming languages, Dart needs a main function in order to know where to start the execution of your code. As you can see, our main function is located inside the bin folder in a Dart file, which is identically named to our project. As expected, our project will print out the most popular phrase among programmers, hello world. Dart devs were kind enough to go even further, appending the answer to life, the universe and everything to the string. What we can also observe 
is that we can pass a list of string arguments to the main function. Let's actually make use of that. We'll get a glimpse of how amazing Dart language is by calling the fold method on the arguments list so that we can directly append the sum of the elements to the existing hello world 42 string. Now that we coded the output of our program, the big question is, how do we run it? Well, there are two main ways. You can do it from inside the editor or from inside the CLI. Before we dive into how we can run the project though, it's really important that you know how Dart picks the right file to run out of the entire project. It's actually not that complicated. By default, Dart is assigned to run the Dart file located inside the bin folder, a file that has the same exact name as the project name. If we switch back to our terminal, you can notice there is a run command inside the CLI. If we type it, notice we didn't mention any file to run, but it would still print the right thing. Dart automatically knew how to retrieve that specific file and run it. We can also type in dart run plus the name of the project, which will do the same exact thing. The only difference is that this time you're able to also append a list of arguments at the end. Notice that right now it prints the right sum. But the real question now is, what if we move this file to another location? Or perhaps, what if we rename it to a different name? Well, in this case, you'll notice that you won't be able to run the project by typing in just the dart run command alone. Dart is set to retrieve that specific file. And since there's no such file at the predefined location, it won't be able to run anything. However, we can still run the file from the CLI by typing dart run and the path of the file. You just need to help Dart with a hand in order to run the project. A big plus of running the project from the terminal is that you can easily mention the list of arguments. Again, if we set it to be 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll retrieve the output of 10, which is the sum of all elements. As you saw, I also wrapped the code into a try-catch block so that if the user provides something different than an integer, the program will warn us. What I can recommend you is, however, to leave the Dart file where it was originally placed right inside the bin folder. This way, we're maintaining the standardized structure of a Dart command line application. So, we saw the methods on how we can run our app from the terminal, but how can we run it inside VS Code? Well, inside VS Code, I'm all about convenience. So I usually run the project via quick keyboard shortcuts. If we go right up here to the Run tab, we can see that you can run your code without debugging by pressing Ctrl F5. Therefore, if we switch our view to our Dart file containing the main function and click Ctrl F5, you will see that the code ran perfectly inside the debug console. However, this is only because VS Code knows what file to run. If we switch to another file, however, you can see that the command won't work anymore and that VS Code automatically created a configuration file for us. This configuration file is a way we can tell VS Code what are the run parameters it should take into consideration when we press F5 or Ctrl F5. We're interested in two parameters right now. The program parameter, which should point out to the path of the file we want to run, and the arguments parameter containing the list we want to pass to the main function. If we save and run the project again, no matter what file you have it open in your editor, VS Code will know where to find the specific file to run, and indeed, it outputs what it should. So there you go, this is how you can run your Dart project. As you saw, there are multiple options to choose from, but it's better to know all of them so that you'll pick one that fits you and your scenario the best. Moving on, we have only one topic to cover before we can wrap up this tutorial. Along with running our project, debugging it is definitely another crucial step if something doesn't work as expected. From my experience, the easiest and most familiar way to do it is inside the editor, because you have faster control over your breakpoints, steps, live updating variables, expressions, and so on and so forth. It's just a more pleasant experience overall. However, if you want to get your hands dirty, you can also debug your app in a more advanced environment by using the Dart DevTools. To do so, first and foremost, we need to make sure we have installed the DevTools package onto our machine. So, we'll open up a terminal and type in Dart pub global activate DevTools. Take in mind that your terminal might say that the location to where pub installs executables isn't listed on your environment path. In that case, we'll need to add it manually by browsing into the environment variables and pasting its path right there. 
in Windows. After we've done that, we'll also need to restart all terminals, including the VS Code editor, for the changes to take effect. Having this said, power up two terminals inside our project. In the first one, we'll simply type DevTools command and hit enter. A browser tab with the DevTools web service will open. In the second terminal, you can start typing dart run dash dash observe dash dash pause dash isolates dash on dash start to run the app both in debug mode and pause it right on start. As you can notice from the terminal, Dart provides us with a link we'll have to copy and paste right into the DevTools service. And we're finally inside the advanced DevTools service page. Right from the start, I hope you can already notice how advanced it is. We have multiple tabs like performance, memory, network, logging, and we can also debug our program line by line, breakpoint by breakpoint, just like we're used to inside VS Code. As I said, this is really an approach for advanced debugging purposes because it offers a lot of important performance metrics. I will definitely have a separate lecture on Dart performance later on this course, but I hope you understood the basics on how you can debug a Dart app. Finally, it's time to wrap up this tutorial. I really hope you understood how to create, run, and debug your first Dart project. However, there's a ton of more information to cover on the structure and components of a Dart project. In the next tutorial, we'll do just that. Don't forget, I have also launched YouTube memberships, as well as a Discord server where I post regular updates. So if you want to support me and my channel even more, you can become a supporter, hero, wizard or legend by clicking the join button right next to my channel. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel and share the video with all your friends and colleagues in pursuit of top tier development. Until next time, as always, take care, Wicked is out, bye bye.